What's going on guys and welcome back to the random video blog where every single Friday I Graham G.S. Matthews give my rambling thoughts in the wrestling world, share a few stories, etc, etc. And before we get started, I do want to say this. It is now officially acceptable for me to wear my Santa hat here on the show and in any video in the next couple of weeks between now and Christmas. I mean, I guess it could have technically started last Friday since it went up on December 1st. Henceforth, I thought Holiday Havoc, the Northeast Wrestling show that I went to last Friday night, Nice segue there, I guess. Uh, was the perfect way to kick off my holiday season, the month of December. You'll see me wearing this hat all month long, up until Christmas, and maybe even a few days afterward, including at the NEW event last Friday. So, um, like I said, not a better way to kick off my month of December than going to that show. And I've been to my fair share of shows over the course of 2017, from WrestleMania 33, which will obviously take the cake, because uh, it was my first ever WrestleMania, but... I was at WrestleMania 33, I went to a TakeOver, an NXT house show, a SmackDown taping, a number of Northeast Wrestling shows over the course of the summer, a Progress Wrestling show, um, but the show that I went to last Friday might honestly have been one of the best wrestling shows I've been to in 2017, and Northeast Wrestling never disappoints. Like I said, I've done these videos time and time and time again after every event that I've gone to in the last number of years. I've been going to these shows for over eight and a half years now, almost nine years. And I've never been to a bad Northeast Wrestling show. They're like the they're like NXT. Northeast Wrestling never ceases to deliver. And not only are the shows very good, but you get to meet people you never thought you would. Uh, and last Friday was no different. I got to meet both Cody Rhodes and Christian again, which I'll talk about in a moment. As well as WWE Raw and SmackDown announcer Corey Graves. Now, Ric Flair was supposed to be there, which was really why I wanted to go in the first place. So, the show was supposed to be held in early November which would have been tough to make. I was busy that day, um, but they had to move the event for whatever reason. And they moved it from, I forgot where they said it was supposed to be, not in Waterbury, but somewhere else in Connecticut. I don't remember, but they had to move the show. And only Corey Graves was on tap for that show. And if I missed it, whatever, Corey Graves would be at other shows. So when they moved it from November to December, they added Ric Flair to the card and not to wrestle, obviously, just to appear for an autograph signing. And it was right around the time they came out with the uh, 30 for 30 on him on ESPN. So the timing could not have been more perfect. I saw that, fucking loved it, and I was really excited to meet him at NEW. Uh, unfortunately, the promoter, uh, Mike Lombardi, had to put in an email a couple days ahead of time saying that due to a, a vendor issue, whatever that might mean, saying that uh, Ric Flair could not make the show, which is cool. They said they might be able to bring him in for a show in early 2018. But even still, it was a stacked card. Like I said, Cody Rhodes was going to be there, who had been up until Friday. Spoiler alert. The, North the Northeast Wrestling Champion, uh, Christian, was going to be there, as well as Corey Graves. So with all those people on tap, I said, I got to fucking go to the show. My first Northeast Wrestling show, I believe, since the Chris Jericho one where I met Jericho at the end of August. And I'm so, so, so glad I went. Uh, this was a fucking, very, very fucking fun show. Uh, very entertaining start to finish. So, again, we were able to work it out, was not working that night, and I uh, was able to get to the show a little bit later than I wanted to, but it worked out for the best. So we got there, and I never really get anything above more often than not the general admission, like the bleachers and shit, but maybe because they wanted to sell those seats, they sold me a general admission price for a front row seat, like third row back behind the ring, which would normally, on the ticket, it said it would cost 50 bucks, but I only paid 20 bucks for it. So that in and of itself was a great fucking deal. So that was really cool. And after that happened, I figured, okay, this is going to be a great night. I'm feeling it right now. Um, so I was able to eat beforehand, got in line to meet Corey Graves and Christian. And Corey Graves could not have been nicer. Now, Corey Graves has been at a few shows this year, and all of which I could not have made until this one. So I was very happy to finally meet him. He's probably my favorite announcer in WWE right now, with the exception of maybe Mauro Ronaldo. Corey Graves is great. I was a big fan of his as a wrestler, now as a commentator, and you can tell that he's a, he's a chill dude based off his uh, WWE Network shows and you know how he comes across on TV and the ESPN thing, which I was able to bring up to him. Uh, I went with my dad to this show, and my dad doesn't watch wrestling at all. Unless I'm watching it, he doesn't watch it. But he did watch that ESPN special on the NXT uh, brand a few months ago, or a few years ago, like two and a half years ago. And every single time I'm watching Raw or something like that, he recognizes Corey Graves. So my dad wasn't there to meet him with me, um, but I was able to bring that up. He was super nice about it. And Haley, my girlfriend Haley, really wanted me to tell Corey Graves that for some reason he looked like a doll. So I would be remiss if I didn't bring that up. And I did. And he's like, yeah, I get that a lot and on Twitter and Instagram and 
Um, you'd be surprised at what I see in social media with people telling me that it looked like Ruby Rose and all this other stuff, which was funny. So I got a picture with him. He was super fucking chill. Great to meet Corey Graves. Thank you for liking my tweet, by the way. And I might as well mention it here. So after talking to Christian and Cody Rhodes, which I'll get to in a second, um, I went back to Corey Graves' table and right before he was about to take off. So I'm glad I did this. And I got a quick video, which is up here on the channel if you want to watch it. It's only five or six seconds long. Of Corey Graves saying hi to Haley, which I showed her and she loved uh, later on that night. So which was really fucking cool. He was super nice about it. He didn't have to do that. I could have paid an extra 20 bucks or whatever. Um, but no, he, he let me do that. He filmed a quick video for just saying, hey, Haley, I hope you're doing well. Wish you were here with us. I'm from Ross Macdon, blah, blah, blah. Again, super cool about it. Corey Graves, thank you so much. Doubt you're watching this, but I appreciate your time. And she loved it. She could not have been more ecstatic because she loves you on TV. Uh, so went from Corey Graves to Christian, who I talked about meeting in my last video that I talked about. Uh, not my last random video blog. Uh, one of my last few videos last month uh, coming off of the Rhode Island Comic Con. So, like I talked about, I think I probably mentioned it in that video, that um, I already knew that Christian was going to be on this show. And I was super fucking excited because it's my first time meeting Christian. And like I've said before, one of my top three favorite wrestlers of all time. Big inspiration. Helped me through, get through a lot of uh, tough times in 2011 and beyond and whatever. So, it was great to be able to meet him this past Friday. But when I found out he'd be at Rhode Island Comic Con... I had to meet him there first. Because you never know what might happen. Uh, maybe he was going to... Like, he could have had a Ric Flair happen to him where he doesn't make this show last Friday. And I would have been super pissed. Like, oh, man, I could have met him at Rhode Island Comic Con. So I'm glad I was able to do that. I got a picture with him at Rhode Island Comic Con, which I think is the thumbnail for that, um, that video that I talked about about a month ago. So I did that, but I was able to meet him again on this show. I wanted to talk to him. And he did recognize me, which was fucking awesome. You, I can only imagine how many people he meets all the time. So for him to recognize me, albeit from a month ago, was super cool. And not just to talk to him, but since last time I got a picture, this time I wanted him to sign the Intercontinental Championship, which I did not bring the um, I, I did not bring the belt with me to Rhode Island, Rhode Island Comic Con. So I had him sign the back of the belt there. I mean, Chris Jericho's is on the other end. You can see Christian's right there. So as I've said before, I want to have people sign this championship that are only former Intercontinental Champions. Uh, maybe not necessarily this title, but Christian was able to hold this championship, which is awesome, um, back in 2012, which I brought up to him. He's like, I'm glad I held this one and not the ugly-ass version, which I don't know if you can see. It's right there in the corner. And actually, I might as well just bring it up right now real quick for reference. And I know I've done a random video blog on this, too, um, like about three years ago. And this is one of the Jack Specific toy belts, the old-ass ugly Intercontinental Championship. I gotta thank John for this, by the way. He gave me this belt. And, like, holding it right now, it feels so small. Like, back in the day, maybe, like, 10 years ago when John gave it to me, it felt like the biggest belt in the world, and it felt so cool holding it. But, like, in comparison to this, it's like a child's toy. But the reason I show you this is that it's kind of cool now that I'm getting people to sign this thing that um, I had so many people sign this championship, too. I have Mr. Kennedy's signature on there. Um, Mr. Kennedy, Shelton Benjamin, Shelty B, Finley... Uh, Kurt Angle, I had signed at the end here, which was super cool. And then on the other end, I have Booker T, uh, Matt Hardy, and uh, Jerry the King Lawler. So obviously people that never had held this championship for the most part. Matt Hardy did not hold it. Booker T did. Lawler didn't. Don't think, you know, yeah, Kennedy definitely didn't. Um, Shelton Benjamin did. Finley did not. Kurt Angle did. So a few former champions, a few not. Um, but anyway, going back to my point, um, he loved the championship because he held this championship. So I'm like, after he had signed the belt, I was like, uh, once again, man, thank you so much. You probably don't remember, but um, I just want to say, I didn't, I wasn't able to say it last time that you're a huge inspiration of mine. Helped me get through a lot of tough times in 2011. I really appreciate it. He's like, no, dude, I saw your video. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I thought he might have meant, maybe he did mean that the, the, the tweet that I put up after Rhode Island Comic Con saying, thank you so much for your time. I put up this nice paragraph about being able to meet him and the pictures of me talking to him from Rhode Island Comic Con. I assumed he meant that. Maybe he did see that. But he's like, no, dude, I watched your video. And I completely, like, was standing there in shock knowing what to say. Like, this guy sat through one of my videos. I doubt he's watching right now. Um, but, like, he sat through one of these videos that I did three weeks ago, uh, which was 
fucking amazing. It was it was mind blowing. So you never really know who's going to be watching your stuff. I guess I could have any one of the three people I just talked about: Corey Graves, Cody Rhodes, or Christian. Uh, watching this video and if so you guys are fucking awesome thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to watch this video from little old me um but that was super cool it just reminds you how like these people that you have been watching on tv for so long and idolized and they've been your inspiration for so long at the end of the day at the end of the day they're just people they're just people which is even more comforting than be able to meet them and stuff like that just knowing they're just like you, and they'll be able to watch your videos and stuff like that. So, again, super cool. Could not appreciate that enough. Christian was awesome. And then from there, um, a man who I've already had signed this championship, that being Cody Rhodes. He was actually the one who brought this belt back in 2011 to WWE, which I told him the last time I talked to him. So I met Cody Rhodes about a year ago at um, Chaotic Wrestling or something like that. I forgot what it was. It was in Mass, though. It was in Lowell, Mass, which I talked about a few months ago here in the random video blog, cheap plug. Um, and I also met him again at Northeast Wrestling back in July, I think it was. Yeah, the July, uh, the, the, uh, the July show. And I had him sign the championship, and I was talking to him about how he left Sports Kita and how he eats Sports Kita, and it's a fucking terrible website, um, and all this other stuff. So I saw him again on this show. Again, once again, he recognized me, and it hasn't been that long since I saw him. It was only like five months. But it probably helped that I put out a tweet earlier on in the day saying I can't wait to be at Northeast Wrestling tonight with these XX and X, Corey Graves, Christian, and Cody Rhodes. And I had my Santa hat on. Not this one, not the fucking Bad News Barrett one, but the Hardy Boys one, which you could see in the thumbnail. Um, he probably recognized the Santa hat. There weren't many people there at the show that had Santa hats on, but I thought it was fitting because I'm a Christmas mark anyway, and it was the 1st of December. But he recognized the tweet. He liked the tweet, which was cool. And then he um, remembered that when I talked to him later on in the night and we were just catching up and stuff. And after we got a picture, and that was before he lost the Northeast Wrestling Championship later on the night, which you can also see a video of that I put up um, on Sunday night last week. So have you know, if you haven't already, please check that out. Um, but at the time of that video, he was the um, Ring of Honor champion and the Northeast Wrestling champion. And uh, I had him, He was I was holding my championship too, and he let me hold his Ring of Honor belt, which I held when... Um, Adam Cole, when I met him about a year ago at uh, All Star Extravaganza, the Ring of Honor show. So anyway, um, he was really cool. I brought up to him how Star Wars is coming out on a Friday. It's going to be a very busy day for me and all this other stuff. And he said, oh, yeah, I might see it on Thursday. And I forgot where he said he was going to watch it. And they said, are you going to watch it with Zack Ryder? Because I know they're good friends in real life. And he said, no, Zack usually goes with his high school friends or something and it gets weird. So I'm going to say no to that. Which was just hilarious of him just like burying Zack Ryder. Not really burying him, but it was just kind of poking fun at him, which is fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, so Cody Rhodes again. Thank you so much, dude. You're awesome as well. Been a favorite of mine for a very long time. So super cool to be able to meet him. And I was able to pick up, I don't know if I have it here with me, but a Northeast Wrestling DVD of the event they had back in May, which I couldn't go to. It was Cody Rhodes versus Adam Cole, baby. Jason's favorite. It's an inside joke between us. But um, picked up that DVD, a Cody Rhodes shirt. I mean, he was there. How could I not pick up a Cody Rhodes shirt? And uh, the show itself was awesome. Like I said, and I say that a lot about these Northeast Wrestling shows. But it was probably the best one I've been to all year. Um, the August one was probably, from an in-ring standpoint, I got to meet Ricky Steamboat and talk to Mick Foley and meet Chris Jericho, which was amazing. But the actual show itself in the ring was good. It wasn't great, except for maybe like the main event. Um, the July show, it was solid. The June show was probably the best of the bunch, especially with the latter half of the show. This was a great show through and through. This was absolutely perfect. So they started right on the dot around 8 o'clock. They had an awesome opener. with I forgot who, what the guy's name was, but he faced uh, Christian Casanova, Killanova, who I've actually interviewed, and my interview with him is here on the channel. So check that out again. A lot of cheap plugs in this video. But that was a great opener. Um, they had Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger was also there, but I met him a few months ago, so I didn't really have any desire to get another picture or an autograph, and he never held this, so I never had him sign this championship, but anyway, um, yeah, so no, he was really cool, um, he was really, it was really cool that he was there, he had faced, uh, the Wrecking Ball, who was, uh, Northeast Wrestling regular, um, yeah, they had an awesome, awesome, awesome tag team ladder match, which I guess was kind of fitting with Christian there, and the master of the ladder match, and the DLC match, whatever, um, it was The Kingdom from from Ring of Honor, Adrenaline Rush, NEW Regulars, and uh, The Now, another tag team from uh, Northeast Wrestling. Great tag team title ladder match. Really, really enjoyed it. We had new tag team champions crowned. Um, the main event was fantastic as well. Cody Rhodes defending the gold, the NEW title, 
against Brad Hollister, who I've met before, and uh, Flip Gordon, who I've also met and interviewed. And I don't think the interview is here on the channel yet, but I talked to him about a year and a half ago at a Massachusetts indie show. So again, great match. New champion crowned in Philip Gordon. The crowd went nuts. I went nuts. I was not expecting that. Apparently, Cody Rhodes had said before the show that he was leaving NEW. That would be his final NEW date um, after signing his most recent Ring of Honor contract. So um, I guess it was only a matter of time uh, for him to drop the championship that he's held, I think, since March. But that was a cool moment. I did not know that would be his last NEW date, so I'm glad I was able to talk to him slash get into the picture with him, which was great. But um, yeah, just... Through and through, a great wrestling show. Got to meet a lot of cool people after the show. Saw a few people that I've, uh, you know, been lucky enough to call friends in recent years, including, gotta give him a shout out. I think his, I think his Twitter name is Richie Vargas on Twitter. I might be pronouncing that wrong. There might be a number in there. Uh, but I've been following him for a number of years now on Twitter and vice versa. He recognized me. We were able to shoot the shit for a few minutes and meet his girlfriend. So they're great people. Awesome to meet you, dude, if you're watching this. Um, hopefully we can catch up down the road, but, uh, yeah, just overall a fantastic night. Like I said, probably one of the best shows I've been to all year. And I've been to my fair share, like I said, uh, from indie shows to WWE shows and stuff like that. But this was a lot of fun. This was uh, a lot, a lot of fun. I'm very glad I was able to go and I'm uh, looking forward to going to my next NEW show whenever that might be. I do have a hunch though. I know they're having a show tomorrow. So if you're in the area, I think it's in Bethany, Connecticut, definitely check it out if you're free. I think it's the uh, King of Bethany tournament. So check that out if you want. Uh, it's a great show. You won't can't go wrong with Northeast Wrestling. But they have that coming up tomorrow. Don't think they have any more shows for the remainder of the month after that. I think they have a few more shows in February and uh, January. They did announce, which is their biggest show of the year, uh, their March show. In early March, they're having Emma up here, which got a big pop for me and everyone else. So Emma's going to be there. I have to go to that show. would love to meet Emma. She's been uh, one of my favorites for a while. So would love to meet, be able to meet her. And that's in like three more months. So probably do another one of these videos after that show. But yeah, again, fantastic night. An awesome way to kick off the month of December. And once again, support indie wrestling. How many times do I have to say it here on the channel? Indie wrestling can sometimes be more intimate and fun. And my dad said the same thing after the show. And again, like I said, he's not a huge wrestling fan, but... He was there with me. He had a great time. And if he had a great time, then you're going to have a great time too, especially if you're a wrestling fan. So, um, yeah, it's, it's much more intimate, a lot more fun. You get to meet people, especially at NEW. Like I said, Cody Rhodes, Corey Graves, Christian, Jack Swagger was there. Um, a lot of awesome people. The Kingdom for Ring of Honor. Punishment Martinez also had a match against uh, Josh Briggs, who I've heard the name, but I've never seen him compete before, I don't think. Um, I would have loved him in Punishment. I mean, it wasn't like my top priority, but yeah, Martinez is uh, an up-and-comer in Ring of Honor too, so I'd have been able to love to meet him. Uh, love to meet him, excuse me, but uh, maybe at some point down the road. But anyway, great show, awesome experience, uh, and it won't be my last show of 2017. We'll see what's coming up the next few weeks, but I have a hunch I'll probably be at the uh, upcoming house show here in Connecticut in Hartford uh, with Haley of all people, actually. Uh, coming up in a few weeks, I think the week of Christmas, a few days after Christmas. So that would be my first WWE house show since the one I went to with Jason about a year ago in MSG. And they're going to MSG again the day after Christmas, but she's flying in on Christmas. It'd be super busy and just not something I really want to deal with. But um, and it, that's also Raw. So I'm looking forward to being at the Raw house show later on uh, this upcoming Christmas. Hopefully, fingers crossed if I get uh, tickets from Santa. So super long video. If you watch the whole thing. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. I'll be back next Friday talking about God knows what. And until then, guys, have an awesome rest of your weekend. Enjoy the holiday season. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.